Hi, I'm Doug McKinley and you're watching Adoram TV. We're here in County Waterford in Ireland and today we're going to look at converting our colour landscape pictures to black and white landscape pictures. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. So many photographers, especially beginners, think that getting a good black and white picture is as simple as setting the monochrome setting in your camera, if only it was that easy. There's lots of things to consider when looking to get a good black and white image, especially landscape pictures. From software for post-processing to your composition. And without understanding these elements, you'll end up with a flat, boring, grey picture. So we're, we're on this beach here and it's got this great geology behind us, nice leading lines into the picture. So we're going to see if we can get a shot here. Now there's a few components to what makes a good black and white image and one of the first things you have to think about is foreground interest. So you want something in the foreground to grab your viewer's eye and these are fantastic, this, this, these rock escarpment I suppose, because they've got these natural lines that are going to draw you into the picture. So we're going to look for one that's got a little bit of water in it, a little bit of lines. And I think this spot right here is really nice. There's a few things we have to keep in mind. Sky. You've got to look for some cloud. A plain blue sky will just turn out to be grey and dull. So you want a bit of cloud in there. And the light. You've got to watch for the light. You want areas of shadow, dark shadow. You want areas of mid-tone and you want areas that are bright. And last, of course, is the tone. So you've got to start thinking in tones rather than color. For instance, with green and red, easily distinguishable in a color photograph, in black and white, they're the same tones, they look exactly the same. So you want those tones to stand out against each other, to play off of each other. It takes a little bit of practice to start thinking in tones, but once you start doing it, it becomes pretty easy. And when focusing, remember to focus one third into the scene. Not the background, not the immediate foreground, one third into the scene. F11 should give you, a, I would say, pretty much a sharp focus from near foreground to infinity. Black and white pictures don't necessarily have to be big, giant landscapes. They can be detailed pictures, small parts. And we're on this amazing beach with all these stones and rocks and rotten wood. And it'd be a real shame not to take advantage of that to get some nice, clean, detailed pictures, like this one. Now just a word about your file selection. Remember always shoot in RAW. Don't shoot in JPEG, shoot in RAW. Because with RAW files, you've got much more flexibility in your digital darkroom to manipulate your pictures so you get the best black and white pictures possible. This is a great beach. Fantastic, a little bit of sheen of water on top of the sand, creating some really great reflections. I'm going to try and silhouette somebody who's walking on the beach, hopefully. I see a couple of potential uh, targets up here. But first I'm going to change the lens. I'm going to go from a, a 24 wide angle to, uh, to a 70 to 200 zoom just to give me some more reach, uh, a little more flexibility. So we'll do that right now. So I've got a subject about to enter my field of view. And I really like the way the cloud, the sky is reflecting off of the, the wetness of the sand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to silhouette her out, but I'll get her reflection in that really thin sheen of, of water as well. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. So I've got the subject walking across my field of view and uh, she's reflected off the sand, the wet, the wet sand, and, uh, and silhouetted at the same time. It's really nice. So black and white pictures don't have to be limited to landscapes. We've got these great old structures here, the rundown buildings, make a fantastic subject for black and white pictures. Now, we talked earlier about not using the monochrome switch setting in the camera body. And the reason for that is it tends to make the pictures pretty flat. And ironically, to get a really good converted uh, black and white picture, you need all those vibrant colors in there to give you those different tones then you can work with those once you get it into the computer. So we're going to set up and get a shot of this fantastic old house here. What a great spot. 
So I'm gonna just pop a wide angle lens on my trusted old friend, a 24 millimeter, 1.4 lens. Set our aperture at f11, I think, and the sun is hitting this, this, uh, this structure perfectly. It's a bit of a no-brainer shot, really. It should be really easy to get a good shot. The only slight problem is I gotta make sure I don't get my shadow in the picture. Now the sky is really blue right now. And a blue sky in a monochrome shot tends to wash out as kind of gray. But by tweaking the contrast in the computer, you can make that blue sky look almost black. It's a pretty cool effect. So I've got my pictures now. The next step is getting them into the digital darkroom, AKA the computer, and to start working on them. So what we're gonna do now is convert uh, a color image to black and white. Um, I'm going to be using a plugin for Photoshop called Silver Effects Pro 2. But first we'll start here in Lightroom. This one's Lightroom 5.7. Now what we need is a reasonably decent color image. Now it looks a bit flat because it's a raw file, so we're going to do some quick adjustments. First of all, I'm going to straighten out the horizon a little bit because it's annoying me. And uh, with Lightroom we've got some great tools in here, so we might bring the exposure down just a little bit. Bump the contrast up a little bit. Uh, bring the shadows up a bit, up a little smidge as well on these slider bars. We also have a built-in graduated neutral density filter, which we're going to use. So I'm going to spread that out a little bit. I'm going to double-click effects, make sure there's nothing on there to annoy us. We're going to bring the exposure down a little bit. And the contrast up. And some of the shadow, take a bit of the shadow. They're trying to try to take some of the shadow at the top of the rocks there. Add a little bit of clarity, give it a little bit of punch, and a slight smidge of saturation. And then we're going to close that and we'll go back into our basic uh, sliders and we'll just adjust again a little bit. A little more contrast, add a little clarity in the whole overall, overall shot. Um, we might uh, just correct the lens, try to get rid of any of the chromatic problems that might occur detail. Um, I'm not going to get too heavily into the whole sharpening of images, just a quick a quick little bump up of detail. Tiny bit of luminance and we'll go back out to our full picture. Now we're going to export it out to Photoshop. Uh, so export. We will call it Coast 1 and hit return and it will export into Photoshop the one I'm using is CS4. And from there, we're going to go into Filter, down to the Nick Collection, scroll over and down to Silver Effects Pro 2, which will break up a whole series of dialog boxes. And uh, the cool thing about uh, <clears throat> Silver Effects, and with many of the other, other um, plugins, black white plugins, they give you a whole series of presets. You can see them here on the left hand side of the screen. And you can scroll down and just check each and every one if you want to see the effects, how it's going to work on the image. You know, it's high structure harsh, high structure smooth, wet rocks, which I think we'll go with today. <laughs> so again, got all these slider bars on the right. You can make your adjustments. You know, a little is a little goes a long way. So just be see the difference by sliding it with the shadow slider, go all the way over, and go out to the right, all the way to the left, it just gets a little bit darker. So let's just find a nice spot in the center so it gets some some nice sort of texture on those rocks. What's great about this uh, plugin is you got these control points so you can drop them in wherever you want and they will only affect the place, the area of the picture where the yellow kind of little toggle is. So with this one, we're going to bring our brightness down a little bit. Bring that cloud down a little more, a little, a little more moody. And then we can grab another one <clears throat> and drop it in over here. Just check that size. It's a little big. And then bring that brightness down a little smidge. We've got our filter sets here blue, green, yellow, orange, 
and they will stand by red, which I still like. So we'll just do that, take the strength down a little smidge. Now you've got this choice of different films here, analog film effects. Now that's something you may or may not want to use. Um, I was a big fan of Kodak Trixpan during the day, but but I think uh, for the computer I quite like this Kodak Panatomic X. Toning, there's a whole variety of tones, I'm a little partial.